17 for me. Saying we're watching now. We forgot about them. The main people that keep this business going. And what people don't realize is that without us, they're not going to have a city. You know, we can shut the place down. And of course, that's not what we want to do. But if they push it to, the, they put us in, in this predicament. We didn't get here by choice. They need to wake up and start a coffee. You know what? This trip is going on too long. And last time we had contract negotiations, we didn't get with them. We didn't get hardly anything. And this time they've been taking away. They've been taking away a little of it. A little bit of the time. The past few years of COVID, we all served. We all served here, risked our lives. And we didn't even have vaccines at that time. And now they don't care. Meanwhile, all some of all the CEOs and all, all the people on top, they were sitting at home playing with the computers and they were still, still getting paid. Eh? So this shit has got to stop, man. Yeah, unless we show some kind of a united front and do something. And we're we're going to remain we're going to remain in the situation we are. And if now is the time. I, in in my lifetime, I seen when civil rights when the civil rights movement was young and people were on the street, things improved, and we are right back. We are right back to where we started it. The situation now is is worse with all all this, with the, the the rate of inflation. The, all the, we got a war coming. This shit, we need to do is stand, stand together so that we can get somewhere. That's the message, kind of a message I want to give. The brothers gonna be here. Meanwhile, shooter, want to say anything? Um, I just again, I, I'm gonna um, I see a few more people. Uh, does James want to say something? James, where'd you go? Or jo Jolene? <laughs> Some of the stewards, why don't we have some of the other stewards come off? Well, I gotta say, like how Frank is saying, we have to start standing together. A lot of times guys come out, hey, what, what's going on, what's happening? But we as stewards, we have to step up too, but we need you guys to step up too as well. When they see that, that they can break people up and have them not communicate with each other, that's their wing. And that's just like how this is uh, coming up on the 18th, this uh, Public Works luncheon. We have to make sure we do not show up to that. We have to send a, a message that a pretty little sandwich and some gift that we're going to end up throwing in the garbage, we don't need that. That money can be turned around and, and put back into us. Give us a thank you. Give us a hey, email to everyone. Thank you very much. Hey, you're, you're going to get a $5 bonus this week. I mean, if that's chump change, but still, it's at least saying something. For them to just turn around and their last thing telling us oh well, we're going to give you a one percent signing bonus one time that's, that's nothing that's that's crap yeah, that's, it's total bullshit it's total bullshit and we need to get away from this kind of shit and again if we don't if we don't show some kind of united front then we only got ourselves to blame you know the past two years have been, have been hard on everybody this time to stop using excuses now it's time for the city to step up and give us what we deserve because we stepped up for the past two years and risked our lives and, and continue doing our jobs so the city could remain open and now they turn around and act like, act like if we're just a, a turd on the wall or on the floor. Or that we're greedy. Yeah, that's another thing. Aaron, anything? Uh, just the same thing, man. I mean, if we don't stick together, you know, like I said last time, you know, we're not going to get what we deserve. Um, as you can see over the years, even before the pandemic, the city gives us, you know, 1.5, 2 percent raises. That's not going to cut it anymore. And they want to give us the same kind of raises now and not give us no uh, retro pay for the last two years. And then offer us a 1% sign-on bonus. I mean, that's a slap in the face. I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty disappointed uh, to say I even work for the city. Um, you know, it's one of the, it's one of the most, uh, you know, richest cities in Southern California. We bring in all the tourism. Everybody wants to come out here. Um, and for them not to want to give us anything for the past two years, I mean, like Frank said, that's BS. Uh, if we don't start standing together, if we don't start sticking up for what we believe in and what we deserve, uh, we're not going to get anywhere. Uh, that's why we're all here. Um, he's going to give an update on what they countered with. Uh, but like Frank says, uh, we want to set a point to, you know,
know, stand together and not show up next week. Um, I don't need a sandwich from the city. I don't need a handshake. I don't need a pat on the back. What they need to do is they, they need to give us what we deserve, and that's it. Um, you know, so that that's pretty much what, what it boils down to why we're here. James, I want to say something. Maybe mention some of the some of the other cities that actually did get some COVID pay and hero pay. There was some other cities. We don't know who was on the table. Beverly Hills gave it out. It's hero pay for guys to stand up during the COVID. We never missed a beat during it. They recognize it. They do not. They don't think we're worthy of it, right? The city's got uh, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand yes. per person. How much did Beverly Hills get? Beverly Hills. Redondo. I'm not I think Redondo had a 12,000 on the table up there. 13 was, a right person now. was 13. Uh, everybody is a different amount of money, but the question is, and I think uh, Frank said it the best, you guys stood up when they needed help. How many of you worked during COVID? All of us. Everyone. How many of you got sick because of COVID? So you guys gave. You gave at the workplace? and you gave because you got sick. And I hope you all got workers comp for that. But, you know, I mean, so you guys gave. The question is, what are they giving to you? So what are they offering? 1%. So is that, I mean, it's 1%. So I look at the cities who, and the counties and the workplaces that have worked around here, whether it's DWP, which is the king of the kings, or uh, whether it's UCLA or whether it's your other cities, Santa Monica does not pay the best wages. This is a people-friendly town, right? Well, it's not, it's friendly to which people? It sounds like they're standing on the backs of their workers to provide, so that you provide a service, but you don't get the recognition and you're not getting the raises and the pays that you deserve. So that's one of the things that we're out here for today, to say no more. So. Um, I want to just open it up. Brother, also, you might want to mention how they're not, the city is not actually giving us the equipment that we need. We actually have, to, we all have to do extra duties. They've been reducing the workforce, and they, and they expect us to get, do the work of, of, of people that are not around here. And sir, we, we're doing it because we have a responsibility to our families. We have a responsibility, you know, to our jobs. But it's, it's got to it's got to stop at some point, brother. You don't want to say anything. Um, we don't know what's going on around here. Bottom line is, it's up to us. If we're going to come together and get united and stick together and, and get what we're asking for, or we're not. That's the bottom line. This today is 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 the first step to moving forward. Next week, we all got to show that we're together. And the way we show is by not showing up. Once the city sees that that, that we're actually sticking together, we're going to get everything we're asking for. And I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think we're asking for it a lot. I think it's fair. And we're going to get it, but we got to stick together. That's the bottom line. So next week is workers, <laughs> it's Public Workers Week. They want to do public workers recognition. What's the best way to recognize your work, you guys? Is it having a burrito or a sandwich? Or is it money in your paycheck? That's money in our paycheck. We all got bills. We all got to pay our rent. We got to pay our utilities. We got to pay for it. Our kids, we gotta pay for gas, the gas is up. Everything is going up. Everything is going up except for our wages, man. And where is it where is it gonna stop? Tell me, where is it gonna stop, man? Because we don't do anything about it, then we only have ourselves to blame. This is what we need to stand united and, and send a message to the city. Send a message to the city that we are not taking this shit anymore because it's just not right. It's not right for them to to, to reward companies that that have a, a lot of money already and we're, we're just making pe we're making peanuts and that's what they offered us too peanuts they offered us peanuts as far as what, uh, the, uh, the increase in pay and 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 the, and the hero pay also it's bullshit it's total bullshit man so we we're, we're, what i'm telling you guys we're trying to do the best we can so that we can get something decent at least decent we, i don't expect i don't really you want a fair it. and equitable wage increase that is what everyone at this table wants, is a fair and equitable wage increase. So what does that mean? It means uh, a wage that keeps up with the cost of inflation. Inflation right now is 8.5%. So you need something so that you're not lost somewhere down in the bottom. 
so that you can keep up as workers in Santa Monica. Santa Monica is one of the most beautiful, really progressive cities in the United States. I just started working for your local. I just was assigned to your area. So, I mean, I'm learning more about Santa Monica. It's just been Santa Monica to me. Now I'm le learning about it. But you know, that's what's reputation, and it's, but I'm seeing what it is. It's people that are, you know, so we talk about inflation, we talk about prevailing wage. You guys make way under jobs that are prevailing wage with contractors out in the world. You don't make enough. You don't make enough if you look across and you do comparisons with other cities and counties. So those are some of the things that take into a wage scale. The hero pay, go on, Frank. Where is Santa Monica gonna be we don't provide the services that we do, they'll just, they might as well just shut it down because they, they can't operate without the labor that we provide. So it's I have a question. I mean, if, if we don't get it, what do we do? Shut it down. Right. We don't get yep. it? Yep. Shut it down. If right. we don't get it? Shut it down. down. If we don't get it? Shut it 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 down. sacrificed so much the last couple of years to keep our city going. So on behalf of our residents, obviously, they support you. They may not always know who you are, but they see your faces throughout our city. And I see your faces throughout our city every day as I walk, as I see our city working. You guys can't go on without a uh, cost of living benefits and raises that reflect the amount of value you are to our city. So I'll let you know that you'll have my vote. And and I support all of you getting fair, just contracts that show how much worth you are to the city of Santa Monica and our community. Uh, wear that city seal proudly 
and I'll do my best to back you up each and every day. I've met some of you as I walk the streets and come up to you as you're, you know, doing things throughout the city to help everyone. We understand. We have limited budgets right now, you know that. We're not flush the way we used to be. But regardless of whether we're flush or not, you're the backbone of the city. You're the ones who keep the city going every day. So when it comes down to it, it's simple. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Si se puede. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. So thank you. I'll support you in that council chamber each and every day and on the streets of our city. Thank you. Uh, thoughts on what's going on in your work area. Give, uh, anybody want to give uh, some thoughts on what uh, what you have to go through every day with uh, maybe even with your supervisors? Keep it short, or, or, or you know, this is a this is a, a, a short time so you can express your feelings if you want. <laughs> so, you know, like, the streets, we're understaffed. We we have nobody in there. We have one supervisor. It's doing three people's job and admin going way above and beyond. And it's ridiculous. They, they're, what happened to the hero pay? Are we ever going to get that? Or are we just people for shit? I, I, I don't think it's fair the way that others can get it. And we're understaffed so bad that it's ridiculous. Anybody else? Anybody else? Speak up. Now's your part. Even before... The pandemic, I've only made like I've gotten a 40 cent raise in like seven years. So it just it just doesn't like they can't blame it on the pandemic. Even before that, when they were flush, they weren't they were the yeah. So I don't know what they can stand on now to say that they don't have any cash. So here's the thing. They're making us do more work. We're taking on responsibilities of, of two or three people, and then we're only getting, um, getting up, ending up with a 40 cent raise over the past five years. They want us to forget about the last two years and not offer, basically not offer us anything, man. That means that you were risking your life even before we had vaccines so that this city could prosper. And look what we're getting, eh? We're getting a big fat, I don't even want to say it, but this is just not right. It, no matter how you look at it, what angle you take, how you, you, how you consider yourself, we cannot take this shit because we can't live under these conditions, man. The prices of, of everything is going up and and, uh, and our wages are, are stagnating and we're not getting anything, man. Where do we go from here? If they don't do something, it's just going to get worse and then they're going to dig this house in a hole where nobody can repair it. Not the city council and not nobody. So we need to stand together, man, and, and keep this in mind. So what do we want? Contract. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Contract. When do we want it? Now. Is one percent good enough? No. Is one percent good enough? No. Hell no. Hell no. That's right. Hell no. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Pick I don't know about the rest of you guys in your departments, but in our department, we've been having a lot of problems with equipment and tools. It, it's pulling teeth to get tools replaced or fixed. Some of our trucks break down every other week. We have one truck that's been down for, I think it's come out two years, and we don't know what's going on with it. So there's there's little things that need to be taken care of that seem like they're simple things, but they're just not taken care of. I don't know who's dropping that ball within the city, but it's sure not us. We're putting in the request that we need to get these things. Is that good enough? No. no. Hell no. They're, what they're doing is they're they're not spending the money where they should be. They're not spending the money on equipment. They're not spending the money on tools. They're just trying to hold back, and and that makes it harder for us. That means that we have to do more work. With, and again, where does it end? Where does it end? What are we gonna do? We're gonna what are we gonna do? Yeah, we need to send them a message, clear and loud, that we are not gonna take this shit. Council Member Delatory and 
and Councilman Carr and I worked real hard Listen up, everybody. to get you Cesar Chavez Day and Jim Jensen's holiday as just a token of the fact that we appreciate you and we appreciate everyone in the city. And yes, you have to have a new contract that reflects reality in this city, but reality in this country. Yeah. So you guys, real quick. Nothing is easy, even getting here is not easy. But what you see around, I want you to look around, look to your left, look to your right, in front of you, behind you, and remember who was here today. We don't want to get in a fight with the city, but the long-term circumstances have arrived to here. Nobody's here because we like each other. We're here because we're tired. These people that you see, there's some fewer people, there's some more senior people. We're tired. We're hungry. The expectation, the expectation of our members has not ceased. On February 25th, and I've said this story before, of 2020, I got an advisory from LA County Health saying there's this COVID-19 virus. And then I heard somebody tell us, oh, it's gonna be done by the spring. There was confusion, there was fear, there was fear, there was confusion, there was uncertainty. And we navigated through it. The first time we asked, hey, we, we need to get some masks for our members. Oh, well, I don't know if we can do that. Not this one. Yeah, oh, we need N95s. Our members are in the front line. Oh, we don't know if we can do that. This is what we got. We need gloves. Oh, we don't know if we can do yeah, that. Those were donated. This, we don't know we can do that, yeah. is then blamed yeah, on the city like, council. Yeah, were, yeah. But the city council, in my view, only gets a small portion of the story. The fact that you're here, I'm thankful, uh, Phil. The members are thankful. Yeah. We haven't... Yeah. Sometimes... We feel that if we don't speak up, we're not heard. All these folks, I assure you of this, because I've been the rep here for a while now. The best attendance during the pandemic. You know what these members could have said? They could have said, man, I'm staying home. When I was administration, we right? were staying home. Correct. Okay. We had the best attendance in history during COVID-19. The, 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 when it was very, very, very serious. And we took on the biggest workloads as well. Yeah, some of us died. They, they, they weren't even part of our Correct. And so the, the next thing that I wanted to share is not only on the work end. I mean, I've shared this with members before. I lost my grandparents as a result of COVID. I couldn't even be at their funeral. Our members have had the same stories. Members were calling me. My mother-in-law in the hospital, Carlos. I need time off. Look, I'm here to get to the point. We all know what, what, what happened, but here's the reality. We won a deal, and I said this to your city manager when he first came and I welcomed, I was, when he got appointed, I called his office over there in Berkeley, okay? He called me right back, and he said, I, I, I kinda like, how'd you get my number, right? I said, I'm calling you because I care, and I wanna set you up for success just with one of the largest units in the city. The reality is that we're from us to support our colors, because from this day forward, all these folks are gonna support their colors because of the pride. productive, a safe haven for business, a safe haven for its residents, right? Things, people don't notice when their work is not being done, because it's being done. They notice when it's not being done, right? And that's the key. So I want to invite everybody to maintain a positive attitude. We are going to exercise our rights, but we're always, getting, so long as there's a table, we're going to continue the conversation professionally, and, good, and with goodwill. But this nonsense of us just status quo, those days are over for us. 
There's no status quo. We're gonna be pragmatic, we're gonna be smart, we're gonna be prepared, and then we have to kick ass, we're gonna have to kick ass. And I mean it not physically, folks, but kick ass, as professionals yeah, kick ass at the bargaining table. So, Frankie, you wanted to say something. I just wanna say the last thing that I want, in my mind, some of us spent 5, 10, 15, 25, 30 years working under, under with riots, working in the, in the worst pandemic in 100 years. And what did the city do? They didn't even write us a piece of paper that said thank you. Couldn't even do that. Write a piece of paper and pass it out to the people and say thank you for your efforts. Thank you for what you've done. They couldn't even do that. Not even a piece of paper, not even an email. Yeah, we're we're the easiest thing for everyone to send. We just got come to work, but we came to work in understanding that we're risking our lives to come and fulfill what we want exactly. to help our families, but also to also get the city back in functioning mode that we are all ready to do and do any extra to make sure that we keep on fulfilling our duties. And also on top of that, folks, this culture started way before the pandemic. That's where my problem is. Yeah. Let's, we're, yeah, we're talking about the pandemic and we're blaming it on, on this and that. But this idea of negotiation where somebody slaps something on the, on the, on the, on the table and says, that's as good as it's gonna get, I don't do that with any other agency. You know what city managers do in all my other cities when they have a problem? They call me and they say, Carlos, can we work together with your team? We have this problem. Okay, let's talk about it. Carlos, we have this hazardous project. Can we work with your team? Let's talk about it. Carlos, we're gonna need this special setup. We have this problem. You know, we found a, you know, somebody hanging from a tree. This is a real problem. We need uh, your help with the community. We need your members to talk to the community and, and calm everything down. Because there's a relationship that is valued. It's not just a textbook checklist. Oh, check, 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 check. You know, screw these guys. No, we want to have a real relationship with the real decision makers for the loyalty that our members have committed to, dedicated their lives to, right? Because some people can say, oh, I'll retire. That solves one issue. Let's bring something to the table that solves for this unit and we'll support other units. But I'm telling you everybody, we did not miss a beat, did we? No. We did it. For us, it really wasn't a pandemic, outside of just being worried as hell that we wouldn't get sick. But every day, these folks put their boots on, their pants on, their, their uniform, and showed up every single day. And I would gladly publish attendance records. The best attendance during the pandemic. The best, the best, the best uh, disciplinary record. So, I don't want to sound like a broken record. We're going to keep you in touch. I will stick around here for as long as I need to. Phil, I want to thank you again for uh, showing up. Hopefully you can show up to our next meeting. Oh, thank you. I want to just make sure everybody knows who the stewards are, so if all the bargaining team members can introduce themselves again, because this is about, really it's about the bargaining team. So Frank, uh, Delane, you guys just talk You guys, oh, let's do the introduction. Our chief steward, let's hear for Frank Morales from Big Thank you. Our custodians, they have to deal with, with needles, they have to deal with dead bodies, they have to shoot. Does anybody care? We care. How are you doing? Thank you. Hey, Phil. How are we doing? We do. We do. Good to see you. I want you guys to be better. My brother, this time, thank you so much, everybody. Aaron Garcia, from all of us. These guys have the power to really have a major impact in our plan. Next, Omar Vizcar from Water. David West from Water. 
Well, we gave you something that we could, I thought was going to be long term for years ahead. It would help everyone. But that doesn't help pay. No, no, no. When, when, when rent goes up 3%, well, what I was hoping is we gave you a higher increase. When you guys give it 1% for one year, well, or three years, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that. We got 8% inflation. And my rent goes up 3%. And, and, and you didn't get expect. raises last couple of years. Right. So and you stack on 8%, anything. you keep stacking on that. I agree. You show up every day when everyone else got to stay home. And the thing is, you look at the and job the city attorneys in our you look city got to stay home. You look at all the job openings, it's all managed. There's nothing for it. All that pays going to management. I, I hope. That, you know, management is coming off our backs because we we're not going to raise. Right. You know what I mean? So, so management to have higher pay. I'm trying to work on that. I'm going to try and reduce some of the management. I want some of the white collar people gone because what really matters in this city is blue collar. Without more supervisors, too few in the department, and nobody will pick up the um, that does, that's that ridiculous. Make sense. Yeah. Just, to, just to remind everybody. Still, because the cuts came off your back, not white collar staff, because they made the cuts without consulting with you. That's, that's a big, but that is a big problem. The big problem is you got staff 
tell his counsel something different than what's really happening. Well, yeah. That's what's happening. We know you get, a, you get a staff report and whatever you're doing in the staff report is not exactly what's happening at the party. That's, that's one reason I've been trying to go. I've been down to the city yards. I've been here 33 years. I've seen everything that happens here and that's what happens. Well, you haven't had a great city manager since 2010. The mock was probably your the mom came out there, yeah, he was a good guy. He yeah, came out there and worked with us. He just went on a trip with us and he pretty much did it in almost every department and worked with every guy in there to see what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I haven't even met our city manager. He hasn't even came down to our department and introduced himself to us. I asked him to come down to the city yards, not to make a speech, but to see what he thought about the city. He was very good. He was very good. He was very I, I, at first, not only him, so I can see public work, director, public work, assistant director, and all the public work things that can come down, you know, like, you need to come and see what's going on. That's why I've been in your plumbing shop and then in all the repair shops and stuff like that. I hear you. No, and, and I appreciate your comments. Right now, I, I, I want to hear from. Well, I want to hear. Not just for, all of you. <laughs> yeah, because I understand. And you guys are on the field doing the work. Don't get me wrong. I just talked to. I was in the promenade. But then, when you were talking about it, because when you make cuts, they promote people. How do you promote people when you make cuts? Now everyone has to look at. If yeah, there's going to be pain, you know, everyone feels me. Sure that I there is in there. Well, it seems like they live in that castle. They need to remember who builds the castle, who takes care of the castle, who repairs the castle. That's the real deal, isn't it? Thank know your value? Yeah. Yes, sir. So, the answer to that is, we have a proposal, we have a response, we're going to give them a counter. We don't believe we are there yet, but if you want a timeline, I can tell you right now that between now and June 30th, if we don't see some significant progress, the process already started. That's why we're here. This, this title that you're talking about this meeting today is part of that process. Because now we're turning our pocket. Guess what happens when you burn people's pockets? Bad things happen. Don't take people's lunch money. Yes. And my question is, what is the standard that the city wants to be held to the city? Like, what do they want? What do they expect? I mean, we give them that, right? So if we're giving them that, why can't they appreciate that? Brother, you know what I would call you it? Any business. The point that you're saying, I call it great value received. We are not, yes, we're getting a salary, we're weighing wages, but in recent times, Costing us, right? It costs, yeah, it costs it, me like almost a hundred dollars a week just to get here. You know, when I can get a job closer to home now and forget about coming to work here just because it's cheaper. You know, just saving money. And that's a theme, brother, right now. But again, the loyalty to want to be here because of, of what they give us. You know, a lot of us grew up in the neighborhoods. You know, so we even have a closer tie to the city, right? We want to represent the city in a good way. We want to give them what they want, but yet they got to value us too. All right. You know, what, what, what's the standard they want? If they I, want the shady standard, you know, what, what, why are we going to go up above and beyond the shady standard that they want? I agree They're gonna with get this that brother. Outside. Does everybody agree with this brother? Yeah. 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 They're not going to get nothing better from a private contractor. They're not because, they because, of, because of the cost of doing business privately is also very high. Because let, let the grass grow for a week and see if anybody wants to come out. Prevailing wage. Also, prevailing wage and flexibility. So look, we're going to do an action next. Let's be careful not trip each other. We're going to line up 
in front of City Hall, we're gonna face City Hall. And then just follow my lead, okay? We're gonna wrap it up with that. Baruch, you have a question? What has the city offered us so far? I'm not gonna get into that right here. It's a public, this is a public, I'm not in a public space. Uh, but there's money on the table. Let's do it, come on. I'll talk to you after. Huh? Huh? Car wheel. Car wheel and push up. Hold on, out of trouble. I also want to thank our stewards, but I also want to create this deal where everybody should know where it is. What's this guy's name? Eric Garcia. What's this guy's name? Omar. Omar. Viscar. What's this guy's name? Hey. Webb. What's this guy's name? Erin Valenzuela. What's this guy's name? James Bavardos. What's this guy's name? Frank Morales. What's this guy's name? Your name's not Samuel. Oh, where's Judith? What's her name? Judith. Everybody, treat her well. Help her become the strongest rep that you've ever had here. And where's Elaine? She went to work she has a meeting right. I'm going to say, what do we want? You already know what we want. We want now. a dead contract. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? A dead contract. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? A dead contract. Honesty, dignity, and respect. 
shitty system, it's time to put that behind us. If you feel like, man, why am I even here? It's time to put that behind us. Some people have said, oh, well, you know, workers, you know, some workers have said, oh, I can leave and get paid more money. I'm going to tell you one thing. Let's change our mindset. Why the hell should you leave? We should bring the conditions here so you don't have to leave. Let's bring the conditions here so you don't have to leave. You shouldn't have to be looking for employment elsewhere. You're already employed here. Let's bring the conditions here. Workers first, safety first. This is not just work. We will show you, starting next week, some of the activities. It's gonna, we already put the t-shirt order in. We're gonna get t-shirts for everybody. Yes. Yes. If somebody's not here, get their butts over here because this is business. In the minute that even one week uh, action from one of our members, it's a reflection of all of us. So keep your noses clean. Do a great job. Let's continue to deliver for this beautiful city. But business is business, and we need a good contract. Give them the end of the story. Want, right?